In this video, I will talk in more detail about how I designed this flexible circuit which folds into a rover. The build video for this project is on my main channel. So here we're just going to talk about the circuit and how I managed to fold it into a three-dimensional box. So like I explained in the video, this circuit is made from a flexible PCB, but most of the areas are covered with thin aluminum stiffeners. On PCBWay's website, there's a variety of stiffeners to choose from with different thicknesses. The stator area over here do not contain the stiffener, so that would be as close as possible to the rotor. The proximity sensor at the front has a cutout, but at the back it also has another piece of aluminum stiffener, so that the pads underneath doesn't bend easily. So all these yellow regions do not contain a solder mask, which makes them easier to bend. The most critical element in making this fold into a box was making sure that um, the distances align. I'm not sure if you can see it, but the length of this side is a little bit shorter than this side, so this covers the thickness of the tabs. These are the tracks that are passing power through the motors. This side is still covered with solder mask because we have one track in three layers. I divided these in two because over here I had to pass this header that with this jumper act as a switch for the robot. The robot also has several cutouts, one for this USB, has four cutouts for the LEDs and also one for the antenna covered by the battery. I'm pretty sure that's affecting the signal of the antenna but there's no other space for the battery right now. As I said in the main video, I originally intended that these bridges would be a little bit roundish but I'm still not sure if they would eventually break so I have to test a little bit more in the future. The bottom will also have two hold pads for the USB as these are recommended to be soldered. For some reason people always assume that flexible PCBs are more difficult or different to design from ordinary PCBs but the truth is that they are not. It is good practice to have different stacks for flex and rigid regions but this is not totally necessary because you can just draw stiffeners on a separate mechanical layer for both the top and the bottom layer. But having a flexible stack on Altium Designer will allow you to simulate bending the PCB which in this case was very helpful. With this 3D view you can easily avoid some silly mistakes. There's also the options for flex rigid PCBs but I don't recommend it for prototypes because it tends to be much more expensive than flexible PCBs. If you're interested in studying this design in more detail the open source files are available and you can view them on Altium even without the license but there's also a free trial linked in the video's description. So yeah I hope you learned something from this video. If you would like to see more content here on this second channel, please let me know in the comments what you'd like to see.